And welcome back. In this video, I'll be going through the secure tunnel and the HTML5 gateway configuration. My name is Brad McDowell, and I'm a senior privileged cloud consultant here in Australia. So the objectives for today are to configure a self-signed certificate for PSM. You can use a publicly signed certificate or a certificate signed by your internal PKI. I'll then configure remote desktop services to support that certificate. Then we'll also export that certificate for the second connector server, as well as uh, providing CyberArk the public key. I'll then install the CyberArk secure tunnel software, which will then help us use HTML5 gateway. I'll then configure the privileged cloud to use the HTML5 gateway. And then we'll configure settings to support the PSM load balancer so that we can support having a PSM fail. Then finally, we'll test that the PSM is working via the HTML5 gateway. So again, here's the lab diagram. Uh, so we are finally installing the secure tunnel on both the connector servers, uh, which will help us utilize the HTML5 gateway. So over in the lab, first we'll go over to connector server one and we'll configure a certificate to support the HTML5 gateway. And then open IRC. And here I've got a command that will create a self-signed certificate for us for the PSM certificate. It's important that the certificate has the load balancer host name that will configure later and each PSM server that you have in your environment. So I'll configure that now. So this command will create a, a certificate that will last three years. Key length is 4096 bits. And this will store it in the local machine. So I'll run that command. And that will create the certificate. Once we've got that certificate created, I've got another set of PowerShell commands that uh, I'll put in the description. If we run this, this will list us our thumbprints. I already know what the thumbprint is, but just to confirm, it's this thumbprint here ending with uh, seven and seven F in my case. So we'll insert that thumbprint there. And essentially what these PowerShell commands do is we'll set that new certificate to listen on remote desktop services. So we'll just run those commands there. And as we can see, the certificate is now listening on this. So we'll open up cert lm.msc and we can see this certificate in the local machine. We need to export this certificate and import that in to the second server. So I will export the private key and all the extended properties. And I'll allow the administrator to import this on the other server. I'll just stick this on the domain controller in my lab. And we'll head over to the second server. We'll open up PowerShell again. Before we can run these commands, I need to open up cert lm.msc. And we need to import the certificate. I'll just grab that from the domain controller. And that certificate has been imported. So if we run this line number three here, we should see that the same certificate thumbprint exists on this server now. And this uh, certificate has the host name of this server as well. So we'll run the whole lot again, and this will change the certificate that's listing on RDP services. We also need to grab the 
public key of this certificate. So I will also export this certificate. And we do not want to export the private key because this will be passed to CyberArk. And I'll do a base64 here. And I'll store this on the domain controller as well. We'll call this PSM cert dash public. So we'll open up that directory and the public certificate I'll open with Notepad. I'll copy this to another machine and I'll get this uploaded later. We'll head back over to connect to server one and we'll install the secure tunnel. So this was downloaded earlier when we downloaded the uh, Privilege Cloud software. I've extracted it here. And we'll extract the installer as well. Once the wizard finishes, the application will be launched afterwards. So we'll put in our subdomain, our installer username and password. And uh, just a reminder again, if you haven't set this password in the last 24 hours, you need to reset it again. Okay, we've authenticated, so we'll add in a component type of RDP PSM. This will be the load balancer, and we'll, this will be accessible through Connector Server 1. I'll also add in another RDP PSM. And finally, we'll add in Connector Server 2 as well here. And then we'll uh, set this up for redundancy on Connector Server 2 also. And close the wizard. I'll head over to Connector Server 2. And on Connector Server 2, we'll open up the installer. So run the installer on the second connector server. And we'll finish the wizard. We'll enter in our subdomain and credentials. Once we're logged in, we'll notice that the configuration has been downloaded from the cloud. And we can simply add in the second connector server for each component type. I'll just quickly go offline and approve that certificate. In the background, I've got that certificate approved. Head back over to the workstation and we'll go down to configuration options. In configuration options, we need to go to connection components, PSM RDP, user parameters, and we can right click on here and go add parameter. I'll provide a link to the details or instructions on what you need to do here in the description, but uh, I'll enter in the details here now. So the name will be allow select HTML5, the display name will be in browser. I want this to default to yes, but you could choose to not uh, enable the HTML5 uh, by default. And the hardest bit here is entering this long piece of text, which uh, enables the, the button uh, for the user to see. So I'll hit apply on that. And if we go down to privilege session management and we go to configure PSM servers, and previously, if I just expand these out, 
we set up the DNS hostname for Connective Server 1 and uh, for Connective Server 2. We also um, have in the background configured the PSM Gateway Server. So in my case, it's this one. So you'll know your HTML5 gateway is working if you go and browse to that URL. When you go to that URL, you'll get an Apache Tomcat error and that's expected uh, when you go to webaccess.yourdomainname, uh, subdomain, dot, um, the cyberarc domain name there. So I know the HTML5 gateway is up and running. Getting back to the connection server here or connection details, we need to add a PSM gateway and the ID is called gateway. So what we're doing here is we're linking the gateway ID to the gateway here. I'll repeat what I've done here on the second connector server. And we've got that done for both. I will also duplicate connector server one by copying it. And I'm going to paste this here. I'll give it a name and this is for the load balancer. So we'll call it PSM server underscore LB for load balancer. So we'll call this PSM load balancer. In here, I called this, we need to update the server name to be serverarc psm dot the domain name. And then we'll select OK. Now that we've made the changes, before we can test, we need to go to each connector server and restart the PSM service. You don't have to do this. Uh, you could just wait 10 minutes and the settings will apply. So I'll just uh, go to connector server one and restart the service there for the PSM. And we'll restart it on connector server two. Now that PSM has restarted on both servers, I'll now make a connection uh, to the DC again. But you'll notice now we've got the in browser switch here that's, that's enabled by default. So I'll make a connection. And we know the HTML5 gateway is launched because it's opened in a new tab. And it's made a connection and it's making its way onto the DC1 server. So that's testing the first connector server. So I'll just disconnect this one and we'll go to administration, platform management, and we'll set the platform to point at connector server two, uh, sorry, connector server one. We just tested it on connector server two. So we'll go back to connector server one and we'll try it again. So that means now we've got the PSM working through the HTML5 gateway for both PSM servers. Offline, I have set up the load balancer in this environment. So I'll just open up the command, oh sorry, PowerShell here. And if I run this command here, it'll show us that when we hit the load balancer, it's listening on port 3389, right there. So what we can do is go down to the platform management and change the platform to use load balancer. So from here, I'll do two tests. The first test will be without the HTML5 gateway, because we haven't tested that yet. So I'll hit connect, we'll log on to the DC and I'll just turn off the in-browser. So that will download the RDP file and this RDP file will be pointing at the CyberArk PSM hostname. So that appears to have worked. So I'll disconnect that and I'll connect again. 
using the HTML5 gateway. So there we are, the load balancer is working through the HTML5 gateway. And finally, once again, thank you for watching.